What's up guys, it's Graphic Phoenix back with another video today, and today is May 26th, and time for a little care video, kind of. This isn't going to be my full care video for Herman's Tortoises, Sheldon in specifically. I figured people are waiting for something, and honestly, I had no idea what to film today, so I figured this would be the best option. Let's get started. So, I'm going to interrupt him here. First, we're going to be talking about Testudo Hermini. And that is the Herman's Tortoise, or I think they're called a couple different names, but Herman's Tortoise is their most common name. There's actually two localities. There's the eastern and the western. And the main way to tell the differences are size, which is not really the best way. But is size being that the westerns are actually smaller, staying at around 7 to 8 inches in length, while the easterns are in between 8 and 9 inches in length. So that's the main difference. There's not a huge difference on westerns, and I actually don't know. So you can see those black bands. They don't like being flipped over, but you saw those black bands. Those indicate that he's a western. Uh, the westerns also have much higher contradictions and contrast in their shell, as you can tell that he does. The other ones are more mucky brown. They're not quite as yellow. I do have a western Herman's tortoise. All right, so now that we've gone over what kind of locality your tortoise is, why don't we go over the care? So first off, the size of his pen, or tortoise table as it's more commonly called, is five foot long by one foot high by two feet front to back. That seems like a fairly reasonable size for a tortoise. I wouldn't go much smaller than that, if any. And as you can tell, I have a bunch of live plants in here. We have some African violet, two geranium plants. This one is flowering and looking gorgeous. Well, he started to eat the other one, but eventually I'm hoping to, I've said this in like every video I talk about the tortoise pen, but I'm hoping to raise the lights up a lot higher and be able to grow a lot more. I also have a bromeliad here as well as over there. So it's fairly well planted. I'm hoping to add some like rock features so he can climb around and try to trim his nails with that rock feature because they kind of grind on it and it ends up filing their nails down, which is definitely a good thing. But like I said, this is not going to be a super in-depth video. Uh, if you're watching this, do not trust this and this only. Do a lot of other research. There's so much to learn when keeping tortoises. It's unbelievable. So be sure to do an adequate amount of research and make sure it's done before you pick up your animal. I guess we'll start off with lighting because it's probably the most simple. Tortoises require a UVB as well as a heat light. The basking temperature should be somewhere in between 85 and 90 with an ambient temperature of 75 to 78 and at nighttime it shouldn't go too much pa past about 70 degrees Fahrenheit just because they are from the Mediterranean and it doesn't go <laughs> quite so cold otherwise they'll start going into hibernation and that's a whole nother box of worms I'm not going to go over in this video. But like I said, they do need a UVB bulb as well as a heat bulb. That is a mercury vapor bulb in there, so it provides both. And this is actually more or less for just plant growth, and it seems to be doing its job. Now their diet requirements, they strictly eat plants, basically. They're not vegetarians, but they're herbivorous. So they're herbivorous, and they pretty much only eat grasses, weeds, salads in captivity's sake, and other green material, they require their diet to be very low on protein and high in fiber. And that is a extremely important thing for them. The Mediterranean tortoises do not eat fruit often, if at all. I know some people feed their tortoise every now and then some fruit, but I don't really recommend it. I never feed him any fruit ever because he doesn't really need it. I actually was feeding him in there some of the Missouri tortoise diet, and he freaking loves that, as you can tell. He's now wearing a hat. But being that they're on a low-protein, high-fiber diet, you want to feed as many different salads as you can, a lot of different weeds, dandelions are great, thistles, uh, there's a whole bunch of different kinds of greens that you can feed these guys, and you always want to check before you feed them anything. Uh, whether that's on a tortoise forum or you look online, those are the best places to find resources like that. Whether to not a, to find whether or not a weed is poisonous or not. Thing that you're probably going to be feeding them mostly leaves from the supermarket and maybe some outside weeds and stuff, depending on where you are. 
You're going to want to be supplementing with a mineral powder just so they're getting everything that they require to grow and be strong. I dust his probably two times a week, maybe once a week with some mineral powder, but you don't have to go super heavy on it or anything like that. You just have to do a nice light dusting in order to form that nice shell that he's got going on. They need calcium. And I actually just removed his cuddle bone, and this is a brand new one, or part of a brand new one. But this is their source of calcium, main source of calcium at least. I know a lot of tortoise keepers notice that their tortoise will not touch it for months and months and months and then eat the whole thing. That's not uncommon, it happens quite a bit. That just goes to show that they need calcium slash a cuddle bone all the time in their cage, just in case they feel that urge of, damn, I need some calcium, so chomp, 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 gone, you know? You always have to provide it. Humidity wise, they are Mediterranean, so 40, 50% humidity, um, not too, too much higher than that. I will occasionally go in and dump, like, kind of flood his table a little bit. Uh, that just gives some extra humidity for some nice shell growth. But other than that, they don't need it humid very often. I might do that, like, once every other week or so, just to put some humidity. And my room is also add a good percentage of humidity as well so that's just more for him to kind of enjoy it now that's pretty much all i wanted to cover care requirement wise there are a couple things that you have to really watch out for and those are upper respiratory infections and diarrhea upper respiratory infections can be caused by too much humidity or constantly having it flooded or like if you live in florida or something like that where it's always really humid and you're getting a wild caught animal that's not used to it chances are it'll get an upper respiratory infection and die. Other reasons to get them is just simple bad luck. It happens, it sucks, but they are treatable, so just make sure you go to a vet as soon as you notice. And one way to characterize that is is a runny nose and like mucus around the eyes and stuff. Those are the main telltale signs of an upper respiratory infection. And diarrhea is a very, very big issue simply because that is a sign that they're not getting a proper diet. As you can tell, that's a tortoise poop. So that's what a healthy tortoise poop should have looked like because Sheldon gets fed a proper diet. Very high fiber, very low protein, no fruits, nothing like that. It is crucial that they do not have diarrhea. That means they're wasting their precious water and that brings up another point. You do need to have a water bowl in their cage. Uh, it's always open access. He can go in there whenever he wants and take a drink. A lot of people think that tortoises don't need water, but that is not true. They drink quite a bit, actually, especially if you catch them in there just when they first start. They could be in there for 15, 20 minutes. Obviously not drinking the whole time, but for quite a while. So everybody, that kind of wraps up my general info about the Herman's tortoise Sheldon. Like I said earlier, do not take this as the only care video or research that you're going to do before picking up a tortoise. This is just my quick May Madness Tortoise 101 care sheet. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you liked the video, drop a like down below. If you made it this far, comment the word flower in the comment section down below. That way I know you made it to the very end of the video. I hope you guys learned something and I hope you guys can take it with you from here. I will be posting another video, a more in-depth video of Herman's Tortoise Care later on. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Graphic Phoenix, out of here.